Hello and welcome to another Tyco video. In this presentation, I am going to be talking a little bit about comets. So the first item of interest here is the ability to compute what we call the Afro quantity. Now, if you do not know what that is or why you would use it, I will be going into some more detail on that in just a moment. And the other item of interest is the ability to display the comet vectors inside the compass overlay. So the blue line here represents the antisolar vector, and the yellow line corresponds to the negative of the heliocentric velocity vector. So to go ahead and get started, the first item here, this is the Afro quantity. So you might see it typed out in a couple of different ways. Uh, this is the Greek letter rho. And I've also got a link here in the bottom left corner if you want to know a little bit more about it. But uh, just to summarize that information, uh, the Afro quantity relates to the total cross-section of the grains of the comet. And so uh, you can think of it as sort of a proxy to the dust production rate of the comet. So a couple of examples here. The 1995 Halebach comet had an Afro quantity of over 1 million centimeters. By comparison, most comets that you might encounter typically might be on the order of maybe a few hundred maybe a thousand centimeters. So that just gives some idea of range of numbers you can expect to see uh, with this quantity. And another desirable characteristic about it is that uh, different observers should be able to arrive at the same value uh, regardless of plate scale and regardless of aperture size. And then finally, uh, if you are interested in computing this value, uh, you would do so typically from images that are captured in the R-band filter. So just keep that in mind uh, if you wish to uh, go about uh, doing this process. So uh, here is a chart that somebody else put together. The reason I'm showing it is that it pertains to Comet C2019Y4. Uh, this was Comet Atlas in the year 2020. And in fact, it was actually very popular in the first half of that year. And you can see that uh, the Afro quantity, it really ramped up and then all of a sudden, uh, it started to drop off. And so uh, this corresponds to uh, March, March 22nd, uh, again, of 2020. And if you go read the Wikipedia article about this comet, uh, you can actually see that uh, it says that on March 22nd, the comet started to disintegrate. And so uh, they actually also have a very cool photo here. Uh, this was captured by the Hubble Space Telescope where you can see the individual fragments uh, that were uh, of this comet. So it started to break up into these different fragments. And this is captured on April 20, uh, again, of 2020. And so it, I just think this is really cool to be able to see this uh, visually, that the comet has broken up into these different fragments. So now that you have had an introduction on what the Afro quantity is, Let's go ahead and work through a couple of examples. So this first example is going to be that of Comet Atlas. So as you can see here, I have 30 exposures. They're each one minute in duration. And the very first step that I want to do is to attach ephemeris information to the data set. So I go to ephemeris, attach from JPL Horizons, and this will present with a new window. Now, if you only know the name of the object. You can choose asteroid or comet name from the drop down and then type in Atlas. Now when you click on check object, it is going to ask you to be a little bit more specific because in truth, there are a number of objects having the name Atlas. So in this case, we happen to know that C2019Y4 is the designation of this comet. So when we click on that, we can then choose select record and having done that, it will now present with a lot of information about this comet. So if you want to read uh, this in more detail, you can, but what we really care about is attaching this information to the data set. So I go to ephemeris, attach to data set, and now that I've done that, you can see that these columns are now populated. So every single image now has uh, this ephemeris information attached to it. And as a sanity check, you can see that this very last column here, in field of view, indicates yes, 
that the object is expected to be within the field of view. So at this point, we can now go to Action View Images, and we'll give it a moment here to load up. And you can see that we now have this overlay. This is an information overlay. And if you do not see that, you can go to Settings Overlay and make sure that this option is checked, the Object Info. So if I disable it, that's what you see. If I re-enable it, then you should see that information presented. Uh, the other thing to point out is that, uh, again, because we have attached ephemeris information, uh, whenever I click on an image, the object is automatically centered within the crosshairs. Now, if you do not see that, you can make sure that this option is checked, follow object on selection. So for example, we could do an animation and you can see that the object is tracked again within the crosshairs. And if we disable that option, you can see that it is allowed to go outside the uh, crosshairs. So that's just another feature. Keep that in mind if you want to use it or not. Uh, but at this point, we would now like to go ahead and compute the Afro quantity for this comet. So first you go to Calculators, Comet Afro, and this will present with a new window. And you can see on the left side we have the input quantities, and on the right side we have the uh, result of the computation. So just going through these parameters here, uh, the first of which is the sun magnitude, and typically you, will, you, you should be able to leave that as is. The, the next parameter is the comet magnitude. And again, this is out of the R band. So keep that in mind. You should image the object with a R band filter. And also, your star catalog settings, make sure that your star catalog is set to use uh, R band as well. So that's very important. So at this point, what we'd like to do is go ahead and create a measurement to determine the magnitude of the comet. So the way to do that is I'm going to go to Photometry, Modify Aperture Settings, and by default you might see four pixels as the inner radius, but we need to enlarge that a bit so that it encompasses the coma of the comet. So uh, I'm going to adjust the aperture here just to make sure that I, I get a good result on that. So uh, I might say that uh, this 8.7 pixels, that gives a good enclosure, and then Dead Zone and Sky Annulus, I might enlarge those as well. And then finally, once I've done that, now I can right click and choose Create Observation, which is another uh, term for measurement. And so as you can see here, we have 13.74. That is the magnitude out of the R band. So I type in 13.74. Uh, plate scale is the next parameter. I have 0 0.63 arc seconds per pixel. Then we have the radius that was 8.7. And finally, the comet Earth and comet Sun distances. So these can be retrieved from this information overlay. So we have 1.034 and we have 1.415. And finally, the phase angle of the comet. So that's 44.9. Now that you have all these parameters specified, you can click on Update. And you can see here we have a quantity of 179 centimeters. Now, does that match up with what other observers have obtained? So that uh, graph here I have, uh, this is a graph of the, uh, the Afro quantity over time. So this horizontal axis, this is days from perihelion being May 23. And so this is negative 45, negative 55. So these images were taken on April 4 of that year. So that uh, winds up being negative 49 uh, days from perihelion which would be uh, this range right here. So this being from zero, uh, from zero to 200, then that 179 actually fits in quite well uh, with these uh, results. So this is a good result that we get, having 179 centimeters, and that basically instills confidence that we are in fact able to compute uh, this quantity. Now the other item I mentioned is uh, the comet vectors. So here is the compass. You, you see here we have north and east. Uh, we are able to, in fact, overlay the comet vectors. So if we go to settings, overlay, then you can choose from this drop down for the compass to show all. So because we have attached ephemeris information, we have also these uh, vectors available. The, the blue line represents the antisolar vector, and the yellow line represents the 
negative of the heliocentric velocity vector. And you can also, if you wanted to, you could go to transform, you could rotate where north points up. Now when you do that, you might have to recenter the object. But again, this is just additional customization. You can see what that looks like. And again, this is with just a single exposure. If we stack the images from Ephemeris, then you get this kind of result here. So uh, that's also nice to see. So just keep that in mind. There are lots of different ways to adjust and configure uh, the, the result that you see here. Okay, so now moving on to the second example. So in this example, I am going to demonstrate how to compute the Afro quantity for a particular comet. Now, the reason I am using this example is because another observer has already computed this value and he arrived at a result of 157 centimeters. And what this allows us to do is to validate whether or not we can achieve a comparable result using the Tycho software. So let's go ahead and get started. So as before, the very first step is to attach ephemeris information to the data set. So I'm going to go to ephemeris attach from JPL Horizons. And we already know the number of the comet. It is 67P. And so I'm just going to go ahead and choose ephemeris attached to data set. And it may prompt for a record number. If so, just choose the one having the most recent uh, epic year. And now that I've done that, uh, these columns should be populated. And it should indicate that the object is expected to be within the field of view. So at this point, we can go to action, view images. And you should see this information overlay if you do not, go to Settings, Overlay, and make sure that the option Object Info is turned on. So if not, then you won't see it. Otherwise, uh, you should see this Information Overlay. And next up, we can go ahead and click on the image, and that will center the object within the crosshairs. Uh, if not, make sure that this option is enabled to follow the object on selection. And at this point, we can now go ahead and compute the Afro quantity uh, for this comet. So I'm going to go to Calculators, Comet Afro. And we have a number of parameters to populate here, uh, the first of which is the sun magnitude. You should be able to leave that as is. The next one is the magnitude of the comet. So this means we need to go ahead and measure uh, the magnitude of the comet on this image. And again, this is out of the R band uh, filter. So very important, make sure that your star catalog settings have been updated to indicate our band. And once you've done that, now we can go ahead and create the measurement. So I go to photometry, modify aperture settings, and the default apertures probably will have to be uh, updated. So four pixels for the inner radius, uh, that will need to be enlarged uh, to enclose the coma of the comet. So I'm probably going to choose uh, 5.8 uh, looks like a good value here. And also while you're doing this, uh, make sure that the contrast and intensity settings are uh, set, to, set to the default of a zero. Uh, otherwise, uh, you might not be able to get a good idea for the actual uh, size of the, the object. So uh, just go ahead and set those to zero. And for the dead zone and sky analyst, I'm just going to choose 10 uh, for both of those. So these are the uh, parameters that I am going to use, and this should enclose, uh, again, the coma of the comet. So now that I've done that, I can right-click and choose Create Observation. So my measurement here returns 12.76 uh, out of the R-band filter. So 12.76 magnitude, and the plate scale is 1.27. Again, I can get that from this uh, overlay here. And the radius, uh, I chose that as 5.8 pixels again from this uh, aperture uh, setting. And finally, we have the comet Earth distance and the comet Sun distance. So this is 0 0.633 and 1.377. Again, these numbers are available from the information overlay. And finally, now the phase of the comet 42.6. So now that we've, param we've input these parameters, uh, we can click Update and we see that we have a result of 156 uh, centimeters. And in fact, that actually matches quite well with the reference value of 157 uh, centimeters. 
So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.